This is the COM Marker Omni-1, and it might look like another fiber laser, but it's actually a UV laser, which means it's using ultraviolet light as its laser source. And seeing that most things are affected by UV light, you're going to be able to engrave and even cut a lot of materials using this style of laser. And as you can see, it's packed pretty well in what looks like a retail box. And of course, it comes with a user's manual, along with some extra stuff, like this raisable platform, which you're only pretty much going to use to get things close enough to the laser when you're using the other supplied lens which is this one that only has a 70 by 70 millimeter work area. But with that setup, you'll be able to get some extremely fine details on small objects. And there's also a foot control switch that comes with this that will allow you to start up your engravings completely hands-free. And more importantly, this came with some safety glasses because UV light can really mess up your eyes. One of my main reasons for showcasing all this right off the bat is because according to the website, these are limited time items. So depending on when you order this, you might get different items. When it comes to the actual laser itself, Itself, it's actually just these three large pieces. And putting this all together is pretty straightforward and easy, it's just a handful of bolts and plugging in a few different cables. And of course, this is all covered in the user's manual. One thing to keep in mind if you're using this video as a reference or some sort of tutorial, make sure not to over tighten the bolts. Because if you do, you can easily strip out the threads. And there's only four bolts that hold this upright part to the base. When it comes to the laser unit itself, there are also four small bolts that hold it to the upright. When it comes to plugging stuff into the base, everything is clearly labeled, and for the most part, everything is shaped different, so they only fit in one spot anyways. There's also this really thick cable that's permanently attached to the base that has a few more plugs that we have to plug into the laser unit. All of these plugs are also different shapes, so you can't plug them into the wrong spot, and they also need to be screwed in to hold them in place. And this is kind of where this machine differs from a fiber laser, because that thick cable that comes from the base is normally just connected to the back of the laser unit, and it has all the power and data cables all connected inside along with a fiber optics cable for the actual laser source. When it comes to this UV laser, the laser source is built into this top half, so all it really needs is data and power from the bottom. And with that simple setup, it can be turned on now. But before turning it on, I need to make sure that the emergency shutoff switch isn't pressed in and power it on. With everything on, you still need to turn on the laser itself, which is done with this flashing power switch. And you'll notice even after you press it, it still flashes. It's because it takes a little bit of time for it to actually warm up the laser to its operating temperature and once it's ready it will just be a solid light and if we look at the side of the laser unit itself it has a bunch of fans and this is to keep the laser within operating temperature and not overheating because even though this is only a 5 watt laser it makes a ton of heat and these type of lasers are typically water cooled so it's nice to see that they figured out a way to use a giant heat sink and fans to keep it cool on top of the laser head itself there's a button that will turn on some helpful laser focus guides and these are fully adjustable if they're not set properly from the factory and they're basically just two laser dots that you need to line up by moving it up and down so you'll be within the proper focus length and as you saw this has motorized movement or there's a hand adjustment on top there is a sticker on the machine that tells you the focus point of this particular lens and this number should be different from lens to lens and from different size lenses. And this measurement is taken from this line right here to the surface of the bed or material you'll be engraving on. There is a ruler built into the side of the machine, but none of the measurements really line up with anything. So you would need to figure that out separately. When it comes to the work area of this machine, you'll notice that there's a bunch of threaded holes everywhere and comes with this alignment block. That being said, aligning things is almost impossible without this. And my original one came with a crack in it. So they sent me another one, which is a little bit smaller. And the reason the reason why this is so important is because UV light on a lot of things is completely invisible. So this way you can actually see it and put this over whatever you're going to be engraving on and line things up properly. So let's do a little bit of engraving on a macaron cookie. And this is going to show off some differences between using the UV laser and a fiber laser because these type of lasers react differently with materials. And using my focus lasers, you can see that everything should be in focus for this as well. And with the lights out, this material happens to be one that you can actually see the UV light on, even though it's pretty faint and here it is engraving in real time and you can see that the laser is not actually burning the cookie it's more or less sun bleaching it at least with the settings that I'm using right now I could change up the settings to a point that it would cut through this but you can see how gentle the laser can be on something delicate like this on top of that it's not going to leave a burnt taste because well it's not burning it and you can see that the design on this came out really crisp and clear and you can quickly change up your designs and customize these in just a few seconds of course this isn't only just for food 
include, you can see that I'm able to do a pretty detailed engraving on this lid, so you can quickly and easily add your logo to your products, or just customize things based on what people want. And it definitely gives a professional finish to everything. And if you're wondering how I figured out the settings to use for all this, I'm actually just using the default settings that came with the laser in this library sheet. And it's pretty much as easy as finding your material in the list, selecting it, and applying it to your pattern. And here's a better look at what those settings actually are. And of course, these are basically just starting points, and you can change these however you like. If you're using the same software that I'm using, which is Lightburn, you can actually take an image and have the program trace it and make some very crisp line work for you, just by right-clicking on it and clicking trace. You can also move around the settings in here to get different outcomes. And once it's to your liking and you push OK, it'll make the design, and it'll be right over the old design, so just move it out of the way, and there it is. And this is the exact thing I did with the first pattern I did on the cookie, which definitely saves a lot of time. But you don't have to do this for everything, and you can actually use images. So as an example, I'm going to be using this on black acrylic, which unlike printing black and white on paper, you're going to be printing white on black. So to make things look right, you need to invert your image. And all of this can be done in the Lightburn software, along with editing the image to make it lighter or darker. And you can also change up the image mode and a bunch of other things that are way too above what this video is about. But anyways, for the settings that I'm using for this, it's just going to be the default ones from the library. But when it comes to the cutting, because I'm going to cut this out, I just kind of guessed at things, and it seemed to work out pretty good. And if you've seen any other information about this laser going around saying that it's a cold laser or something similar to that, it technically is in the scheme of things when it comes to lasers. It definitely gets hot enough to to burn you or burn other things depending on what settings you're using. And I did a little bit of recording using my thermal camera, and you can see what the hottest points are when I'm engraving this picture. So it pretty much maxed out at about 122 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't that hot for a laser hitting something. When it comes to the cutting process, it does get a little bit hotter, but definitely not as hot as I thought it was going to get. Also keep in mind, this laser is not really meant for cutting things. It can if you need it to, but it took about 10 passes on this black three millimeter acrylic to go all the way through it. And you might notice that there is a decent amount of smoke coming off this as well, so make sure if you are doing stuff like this, have some sort of forced ventilation set up. But after all that, here's the image, and it came out okay, but there's a lot of really dark spots. So I adjusted some of the settings and made another one, which came out looking a lot better with a lot more detail. So like I said, the default settings are a good starting point, but there are some things you need to adjust to make things work for you. I also tried it out on some thinner clear acrylic, and it came out okay, but it also warped the material because it got a little too warm. But the fact that this can mark on clear acrylic is one of its features actually, because fiber lasers actually can't mark on clear materials, or glass like this one can. And it pretty much gives a sandblasted finish to glass or plastic like this. Oh, and if you want to be able to actually use your alignment lasers with clear materials like this, because the laser is going to go right through it, just take a post-it note or a piece of paper and put it on top of it, and you can adjust to that. But you still won't be able to really line up things or see where the laser is going to be, so use that green acrylic panel. And in the Lightburn software, you can actually live adjust things, so you can see exactly where it's going to go and move it around, so it's right where you need it. You can even switch it out to see exactly what the text is going to look like. I also haven't mentioned this grate that I've been cutting and engraving stuff on. For the most part, I'm just using it so I don't mess up the surface of the work area, especially when cutting things. It also technically allows air to go through underneath it, and it would keep the laser from heating up whatever it's sitting on and risk melting it if it did get hot. I guess it would also help highly flammable things not catch fire from the heat, like this super dry leaf. That being said, UV lasers are really good at working on organic materials. And if we look really close at this leaf, you can see the structure of all the cells in it still, because they didn't get burnt away. It does do a pretty good job engraving on wood, but you're not going to get really dark engravings. But at the same time, it also cuts through wood pretty good, and it doesn't leave any burnt edges. It can also engrave and cut leather, along with leaving a darker engraving. And since it doesn't burn things when it cuts it, it's really good at cutting paper. And you can even engrave on the paper to add a little bit more detail to it. It also seems to do a pretty good job at marking on brass and copper along with other metals, but you're not going to be cutting these or anything like that unless it's extremely thin. So if you're looking for something that's actually going to be able to cut through these metals, then you're going to need a actual fiber laser. And I have a few videos about those on my channel as well. Overall, this is a pretty versatile laser. That can definitely do a lot, especially for a business or a hobbyist with a decent budget, because this laser doesn't really come cheap. And that's also why I've been 
giving more business related ideas throughout the video. So as of making this video, this laser is $4,000, which is definitely not cheap, but obviously it could be used in a way to pay itself off and actually make money, just depending on how you actually use it. But I think I covered pretty much everything on this. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and let me know what you would use one of these for. And I'll have everything I used in this video linked in the description or the first pin comment. I definitely have quite a few projects coming up that are going to be using this laser setup. But anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.